Act 3, Pepper and the Kite Key Experiment! Or, Zap Pal, look at Ben now, look at him, he's so great! Okay, so this chapter is about the Kite Key Experiment, but we're not actually going to be doing much with the Kite Key Experiment. We're basically going to be getting everything for the experiment, and we'll be doing some proverbs. And that's, that's, that's about it for uh, the chapter. So we begin where the last chapter left off, uh, us coming to Benjamin Franklin and his hot tub. Obviously Benjamin Franklin was real, but he, he did not hang out in a hot tub in real life. Uh, hey Mr. Franklin. Talk away little dude, words are free. Yeah, he, he is kind of acting kind of strange. Hippie Benjamin Franklin. Oh man, so Ben does not want to help us out at all. He, he just wants us to chill and relax and let the dog be with the pews, which obviously is not good. So we've got some items we can get here. We have an iron rod and we have a tomato. Let me see, what happens if we show him our electricity book? I used to care about that thing, but now I'm just sleepy. Huh, well that didn't work. I think maybe we have to go inside and get the schematics for his kite key experiment before he will agree to kind of help us out. And by kind of help us out, I mean he's gonna force us to get all, all of the ingredients and, and prepare the experiment. Lazy, lazy Ben. Okay, she picks up the schematic here. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just like Pepper said, maybe if we showed this to Ben, he would stop being so lazy. Alrighty, so I'm gonna grab the schematic here. Hey look, it's your schematic for the Kite Key Experiment. That's nice, but I'm into cosmic consciousness now. Oh man, you look like a couch potato. So uh, if we find the stuff for the experiment, will you show us how it works, please, Ben? Well, okay. Oh, wait, wait, no, he's not agreeing. He wants hot water first. Okay, so if we get him some hot water, he will do his famous kite key experiment. Awesome. So this is going to be a minor, minor puzzle here. You might remember at the end of the previous chapter that the mother ordered Sally not to give Benjamin Franklin any hot water. And let's just grab some of his stuff. Here we go. He's got some things over here on the right, just random tools, which we'll need for the Leyden jar. Rubber stopper. Ooh, and a magnet. <laughs> Magnetic personality. Woohoo! And this is true. Uh, I mean, most of the stuff here is true. We, we've got a lot of Benjamin Franklin stuff. He, he invented a clock with only one hand. Even smart people have weird ideas sometimes. People used oil, and Ben liked writing to people, and he had a workshop. Yeah! So they did their research with this game. Hooray! Historical accuracy. Actually, speaking of historical accuracy, Sally uh, Franklin here. 
She did exist, but she, she was a lot older than this in 1764. Her real name was Sarah, actually. They, they just called her Sally, Sally being a nickname. So we cannot get the matches because mom ordered not to light the fire to give to give any of that hot water. She can only use it in case of an emergency. So our puzzle is to create an emergency by pretending to kill ourselves with a tomato. Yeah, kind of extreme. Kind of extreme. And now we got hot water for Ben. Oh, I can feel my aura turning purple. Okay, Mr. Franklin, now you'll help me with the kite key experiment, right? I'll have any of the things I need for that. Deal's a deal, you promised. Fine, if you find everything, I'll show you how to do the experiment. All right, thanks. So we've got some of the things here, I believe. We've got the string and the schematic, at least. So let's just give it to him. He's very particular about which type of string, so not, not this random string that he just gave us. He actually wants the string which was by the Pew's mansion in the tree. Because it is silk string. And as for everything else, I, I, don't, I don't think we have anything else we need. We need to make a, a laden jar. Oh, here's the doctrine of personal mellowness. Oh no. Pig out. Talk all the time. Be a slob. Never make promises. Waste money. Be lazy. Lie. Don't get involved. Party hardy. Don't take baths. Let it all out. Love the one you're with instead of loving the one you're married to. And be arrogant. Oh my. That That is, that is not good. Okay. Anyway, the, the game mentioned its documentation there. L like I said, the game's, uh, the game manual. We had a puzzle with the game manual in inside, inside the post office earlier. There's another puzzle in the game manual here in this chapter for the Leyden jar. You need to use the game manual in order to figure out how to actually make a Leyden jar because it needs to be made in a very specific order. So what we need is a jar. Uh, we need tin, we need water and other things. Okay, and now we're lying about, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. A sideboard, I think there's something we can get here. Yep, yep. It's a recipe, so we just got a recipe, which which is um, for the lady at the store. Goody Gumdrops. We met her earlier. She wanted that recipe. It's a nice recipe. Whoa, what's going on? I feel funny. And now for a strange interruption. We interrupt the story to bring you further time travel. Gonna get ya. I'm gonna pull you right out of there. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> gotcha. What the? No. No. I sent you to Ben Franklin's boyhood. Oh, rat noises. Rat noses. Ah. So evil Uncle Fred accidentally sends Pepper back in time many years. I don't know, Ethan. 
My theory was not quite correct. I swim faster with paddles, but they wear me out. Oh well, that was a nice idea, Ben. Ethan, could you get my clothes? I'm freezing. Sure, friend. Oh no, they're gone! Somebody stole them! Ethan, don't tell me that! I need to go home! Tell you what, Ben, I'll run home and see what I can find for you. <sighs> ben Franklin, I'm the ghost of Panama Pete! Okay, so this is Benjamin Franklin as a little boy. We have a mean bully who has stolen his clothes while he was swimming. Okay, so this is when Pepper shows up. And Ben Franklin's just <laughs> swimming in the pond. Hey, Ben. Ah, but I can't fight him. Plus, he's a very large person. So we need to, we need to figure out a way to trick this bully into giving back the clothes. So the way to solve this puzzle is to uh, use this sheet. Just a random ugly tablecloth lying around with eye holes. So we're gonna dress up like a ghost. Ooh, what the? I'm the real ghost of Panama Pete. I'm gonna drink your blood. Oh no! <laughs> All right, so that was a that was a cool cool trick, and Ben invites us to come home with him uh, after after we give him his clothes back. All right, here are the clothes. We'll just leave them down here for you, Ben. So later that night, after dinner with Ben and his family, we get some time to explore this area. This is the, the Franklin house. They made candles and things, it looks like. Uh, for soap and candles, yeah. Do, 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 do. Nothing to do here besides just wait for Ben to appear. I mean, I guess we could try to leave? No, 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 but we can't just go wandering around. Okay. There we go, here's young Ben. I'm glad you enjoyed the mush, friend. Hey, mush is the greatest. Yeah, yeah. So he has to make candles for his father. But, uh-oh, he forgot the wicks. Benjamin! Yikes! Yes, father? You did buy wicks when you were in town, didn't you? Uh, uh. Benjamin Franklin, if you forgot, I'm gonna switch you till you can't sit down for a fortnight! Uh, just a moment, father, I'm looking for them. Friend, do you have any wicks? So we do. Older Benjamin Franklin gave it to us. It's just more like string, but hey, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. So 
as a reward for helping him, Ben is going to give me his kite. And then Pepper goes goes forward in time. <laughs> so that was a strange little diversion with young Benjamin Franklin. In return for that diversion, we get his kite. Hooray! Yeah, that was kind of bizarre. But now we're back to the main game. Great. So let's continue getting those ingredients for the Leyden jar. As well as uh, handing out those proverbs. We haven't actually gotten to the proverbs yet, but that's that's like the main goal of the chapter, besides the kite thing. Uh, but first we have these two dumb red coats. So what we have to do is just talk to them over and over and over again to get rid of them. Simple enough puzzle. That's quite a haul. It's big, not small. Let's hope the general's haul's not too small. To store it all, you might need them all. And now we're confusing them with extra rhyming and stuff. So eventually they're going to be super confused and go away. And now they're going to try to buy wigs? What? Great. So, they, they, um, they just go away. And now the style is not going to be protected. They pick up all the garbage except for except for this one this one thing here. The piece of tin, which we need for for our, our laden thing. So that that that's cool. That's cool. We needed one of those. So you'll notice poor Richard is now here. Poor Richard. He's got the key we need for the kite key experiment. So this is this is where the parables come into play. He's going to force us to give out eight different parables to the eight different characters in the game. And this this is where it would have come in handy if you talked to all the characters in the previous chapter. Hmm, doesn't Hmm, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 He he thinks he he has us confused for 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 Pepper because he met us before we put on the uh, boy disguise. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So let's talk. Let's talk about himself. Hey, poor Richard. You're a brave man. We want to get the key. So we've got the Proverbs. Ben Franklin was kind of famous for, for writing out Proverbs. He said that some of the Proverbs he just, you know, got from France and other languages and just translated them to English and he didn't actually write them himself. Other ones he did. Okay, so let's see these three proverbs. We need to hand them out. So this one is, don't fight over silly things. You, you're you probably both wrong. This one is, don't eat too much. And this one, 
is don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Okay, I can handle that. I can handle those. Okay, so don't fight too much obviously goes to these fighting people. Each other again. Oh, quibbly whips. Ew, what? Oh, 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 I liked it better when they were fighting. Oh, yuck, yuck. Okay, yeah, ew, gross. So over here we have the person who eats too much in the pub. Okay, Mr. Eats Too Much. Here's a proverb for you. Hmm, I don't know. Do you really eat in moderation, sir? What did you eat today? Well, muffins, biscuits, gravy, sausage links, milk, two dozen eggs, loaf of bread, cinnamon rolls, bacon, biscuits, jam, salmon, trout, ham and a half, two whole fried chickens, plain white toast, grapes, apples, oranges, watermelons, Brussels sprouts with cheese, fried okra, orcra, I don't know how you pronounce that, Vegemite, anchovies, ew, six shards of anchovies, brains and eggs, chopped liver and onions. Okay, this guy ate way, way too much. Way too much, I think. A possum, a woodchuck, a squirrel, and a wafer thin mint. Oh, well, at least they didn't have, like, a huge mint. So good news is that most of the people who were, were helping with these proverbs, they, they also decide they want to stop the pews. So we're, we're helping lead the rebellion against the pews. Maybe? Not sure, and it's starting to look like this is going to be an extra long chapter. Well, obviously the Idol Brothers are lazy people, so they need to learn not to be lazy. Yeah, everything's difficult to lazy people, but everything's easy for industrious people. And now they're actually working. Yay! So now we get another load of proverbs. And they worked fantastically. Hmm, do we have any questions about, uh, let's ask him about Ben. Yeah, let's ask him about Ben. So is there any hope for Ben Franklin? Ah, Oh, he's kind of angry about Ben. Uh-oh, uh-oh, well, that's not good. So what are these three proverbs? Um, early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. As in, uh, sort of like don't be lazy, but, um, you know, kind of different. So this one is don't be a gossip, because if you're, if you're being a gossip, people are probably going to gossip about you. And wealth, this is don't be stingy. Don't be stingy. So, first proverb to the, uh, people who are playing all day long. Come on, Hardy Brothers. You guys need to become doctors. Doctors. Yeah, 
So they've been silly for playing all day long instead of working as doctors. So now they're gonna work and study all day long. That's good for them. So over here we have the gossip. The gossip being the woman inside the millinery shop. And we also have the, the woman who wanted the recipe in the general store. This is gonna lead to kind of a Strange little scene starring two characters who won a contest. Uh, two boys, they won a contest to be inside the next video game. And now they are inside the video game. James and Nathan Grayson. Ew, I don't think they like those cookies. Mr. Pew is going to be mean to them. Yeah, he steals all their stuff. All oh, those poor fellows. Well, <laughs> that's a fun little scene. Okay, fun little scene for the two boys who won the contest to be in the game. Aren't they kind of strange looking? Yeah, yeah, I guess they don't really look much like the other characters. Oh well, we are going to give her the recipe now, and in exchange for that recipe, she's going to give us the jar, which we need for the laden jar. Unfortunately, the jar is full of cabbage, so we're gonna have a, a puzzle getting rid of the cabbage. And it looks like we might have another puzzle getting rid of those flies in her shop. I don't know, I've played too many of these old games. I have a feeling when somebody says something like that, it's not really an off-topic statement. It's really, oh, here's a puzzle you'll solve later. Okay, gossipy lady, here is your proverb. It's not my fault my neighbors are weird. Oh, she is a gossip. Okay, finally, the, the person who is too stingy, Penny Pincher. Over in the other part of town. Kinda wish there was a way to make Pepper go faster, like double click. Nope, that doesn't make her go faster. Sometimes that works in these old games. Alrighty, Penny Pincher, I've got your proverb. So we helped her out. And also there's a goat here. So we're gonna use the, the jar on the goat. No, no, now we have a, a, a jar, just a plain old jar, which is great. We'll need that for our laden jar. And poor Richard. Poor Richard. 
What else do you need from us? Hmm, he's nervous. Those those red coats are on to him. Yeah, I do remember those red coats are worried about you, poor Richard. Okay, so these two final, final proverbs. Let's see if I've got it. Um, this one is about um, cheating people out of their money. Uh-oh, didn't mean to click on the personal melanin stuff again. And th this one is about don't be mean to other people. So that would be do, 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 do. that would be for the mean woman, and um, the the guy who's cheating people out of their money is obviously this mean guy over here. So let's give him this proverb. That ah, gave him the wrong proverb. It looks like. I like this music. Yeah, these are not fair games, sir. You're a cheater. You're a cheater. So much for that guy. Uh, now for the final proverb. Wait a minute. Can't get the final proverb yet. Um, I need to actually get some pebbles from back here in the alleyway. Looks like I should have gotten these items earlier. Oh, oh well. Yeah, that wasn't 100% obvious those were items we could pick up and not just part of the scenery. Oh well. So we actually need the pebbles so we could talk to the grouchy old lady. The one at the old so-and-so. So take the pebbles, throw them at the window. Hi, grouchy lady. Here's your proverb. Spoonful of honey catches more flies than a gallon of vinegar. Yep. So here we've got some bad news. Somebody, somebody trashed poor Richard. No, they, they destroyed his stand. Fortunately, the key is still there, so we still got the key. We get the key and we get poor Richard's purse. Carpet bag, what's inside this carpet bag? It's the carpet bag. It's full of women's clothes, what? Hmm, they look a lot like the one that Mrs. Franklin. They look a lot like the clothes that Mrs. Franklin was wearing. Hmm, interesting. So now we have to go all the way back to the Franklin house, now that we've gotten everything for the famous Kite Key experiment. So we're almost at the end of the chapter. That's good, that's good. All I have to do is make that laden jar and uh, give everything to Ben. Of 
Unfortunately, the door is unlocked, so we can just go in ourselves. Okay, so, laden jar. What you do is you take the jar and you put in the tin. Then you want to fill this with water from Ben's hot tub, which is kind of gross. You need to click on the specific spot, the water on the left-hand side. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. And just for the, sh for the sake of all you people who are just tuning in at the very end of the video, I got the jar, I, uh, how did I get the jar? I gave the cookie recipe, the goody gumdrops, in exchange for the jar, and then I fed it, fed it to that goat to get the empty jar. All right, so now we've got the stopper from inside Ben's house and the rod, which was from uh, over here on the left. Here you go, Ben. The Leyden jar. Come on, you should know about them. Hmm, sounds like thunder. Good, good. I hope it's thunder and not, not just Ben's tummy rumbling because he wants lunch. And we have the key. Oh no, it does sound like thunder, Ben. And the final thing we'll get to him is the kite. Obviously, we need the kite for the kite experiment. What do kites really represent, man? I, I have no idea. All right, so that's everything, Mr. Franklin. Hooray, we did a good job, right? And we've got thunder going on right now, so we can do the experiment today. It's time. Time for a nap. Mr. Franklin, we did everything you told us. We've been working for like a half hour. Now get out of the hot tub and show us how it works. We have to do it now. So now we get the fancy Kaiki experiment scene. Oh, there's Benjamin Franklin in his hippie clothes. Okay, child, let me clue you in. We're gonna prove lightning's made of electricity. This cosmic lightning. So he's saying the lightning will go, um, be attracted to the key, go down the string and into the Leyden jar. Leyden jar sort of like a battery. So they had no idea what lightning was made of until the 1700s. People like Ben uh, guessed that it was made of electricity, but he actually proved it. In this very, very dangerous experiment, I should say. You don't want to mess with lightning when you think it's electric, right? Oh dear. So the lightning kind of uh, changes Ben's mind, shall we say. Getting, getting kind of hit by a, a bolt of lightning causes Ben to go back to normal. He's no longer a crazy hippie. He's now a respectable gentleman. Okay, we've got a couple of things in this mess that we'll pick up in the next chapter. And Ben, you do look a lot better like a normal person and not a crazy hippie.
And that is the end of the chapter. Okay, so let's see if we can actually get this quiz. Uh, what did the Leyden jar do? It stored energy like a battery. Wow. Yeah, Pepper just told us that. So, um, yeah, cool. What is not true? He did not go to sea with his brother. Probably just as well because his brother died at sea. What did the sign of the blue ball mean? Let me see. It was the sign of the, the shop? Yep. They just hung it outside the shop to indicate which shop it was. Okay, nice. What did he learn early in life? He learned all these things early in life. He's making candles, he's making soap, and he was printing. Final quiz question. What was it trying to prove? It's trying to prove that lightning is electricity. Yeah, and we've gotten all of our quiz questions correct. Hooray! And we're only halfway through the game. Oh my gosh, wow.